You are listening to an exclusive interview on Bass Musician Magazine. The interview starts now. Hey everybody, this is Raul for Bass Musician Magazine, and today we have the great honor and pleasure of having a chance to chat with Mexican bassist Javier Regalado León, coming to us via Skype directly from Mexico. Hi Raul, how are you? Thank you for having me here. It's an honor. <laughs> my, my pleasure, Javier. For, for those of you that haven't met Javier, Javier is the bassist for the band Javier Regalado and the Groove League. And we'll talk a little bit more about that a little later on, but let's get started from the beginning. How did you get started in music and on bass? Well, I was in the grooving process from the death of my father. So I asked my mom if she could buy me some musical instrument because I knew it was going to help me to heal that process. First, I wanted to be the, a drummer. But the thing about the drums is that it's very difficult to rehearse at night and travel and that stuff. So I was going to decide for guitar. But a friend of mine told me that there were few basses and that I should check out the, the bass. At that time, honestly, honestly, I didn't know what the bass was. I'm from Chiapas, Mexico, in, from Tapachula, for being more accurate. And it's a little city. And I wasn't close to, to the music in, in some ways because there you can see the, the marimba players in, in, all, in all the city, but I didn't have the approach of the musical electric instruments. So I didn't know uh, what the bass was. But I asked my, my mom, buy me one bass. So I was that day where, where the bass came to my house and I was, it, it was a five string bass with the low B and, and I was playing and it was like very um, strange to me because I didn't knew how it was. And I was playing and it was uh, different of what I thought it was going to be. I thought of quitting, yeah, but my mom already played the bass, so I, I thought, yeah, why why not giving a chance? Mm -hmm. So I was looking in YouTube because it was like the boom of YouTube in that day. I was 14 years old. It was in 2006, I think. Yeah, I was looking, you know, for bass solo. And I saw all the big players and I saw that the bass was really great. And in some way, I was comparing myself with bass, with the instrument, because I'm an introvert. And I was in some way making like the comparison between me and the bass. I felt like I'm introvert, but I have a lot of potential. Mm -hmm. And the bass too, because a lot of people see the bass players and they only see them playing like the basic stuff, but they don't know, they don't realize that the bass have a lot of potential. And I was in some way, yeah, relationing the bass with me because I, I was like, yeah, I have a lot of potential, but the people don't don't see it. Mm -hmm. So I was comparing myself and bonding with with my instrument. And how did you continue to learn? Did you take classes? Are you self-taught? I decided to study music four years later. So I go to college, to the university, but I quit. I didn't like how it was go. It, it, uh, how I didn't like I didn't like how it was going. So. I started to taking classes with the big cats in Mexico. A guy named Pepe Hernandez, another guy named Chuck, who is actually my my favorite bassist from Mexico. Then I was self-taught. Very but cool. Yeah, I, I took some, some classes. Well, I was playing bass like four years, more or less. I didn't know the notes on my bass. I didn't know harmony, but there was me um, very energetic and very proud of myself. I, I know at that time I was playing awful, but I was like very proud of myself. <laughs> so I was there, the young me, messaging the, the big cats of bases. Well, yeah, the, the big bases from Mexico and from the USA too. Uh, I remember messaging Jeff Smith, the, the solo bass player. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, Jeff, I want to collaborate with you. I want to make a song with, with two basses. <laughs> I know there are big cats too, but I didn't get answer. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I might have a, like, oh, thank you. I'm not doing any collabs here. But I remember I have a, at that time MySpace 
and some songs uh, uh, there, but <laughs> they were awful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were from a beginner. But I was very proud of, and very atrevido, mm -hmm. very daring. Yeah, very daring to to message the the big cats mm -hmm. and to propose them to to make a collaboration. And that was when I was like uh, 18 years old, I think. And how did your band with Javier Regalado and the Groove League, how did that happen? Well, I think I have like two different periods because at the start when I was learning bass, I was all about the technique, the slab and the tapping thing. Mm -hmm. And I also didn't know about the notes and the music theory. But after I took classes, I discovered the whole new world that the music has to offer. So I decided... Uh, I didn't like the, the slab too much. It was not about my style. So mm -hmm. I was in the internet and I saw Antonio Sanchez, the Mexican drummer, gave a clinic to the Berkeley students. So I was there checking out and he mentioned that in some time he used to play for his ego and not for the music that it's the most important thing you can do. So I make like the intro introspect view of myself and I was like, oh, I'm playing for my ego. So that changed my view because at that point I was starting to play for music. And that was the beginning of, of thinking of the project, the group lead. Because at first I, I thought of making a band with the bass leading, you know, making the, the themes and, and the melodies. But I changed my view, like I said before, and I decided to play the bass as a bass player, but I was trying to make my role. So I decided to compose for only making the bass. Yeah, the, the rhythm session, making the melodies for other instruments to be played. So the other musicians, you, the, the Groove League is a bass, drums, guitar, and trumpet. Yeah, the drum player, it's called Adolfo Angeles. He's a good friend of mine. The guitar player is Victor Dominguez and Carlos Bañales on the trumpet and the flute horn. Victor and Adolfo, they are my friends here, so I call them to join my project. Mm -hmm. They say yes. I have the honor to be, to be with them because all that I was looking for, they, they have it. Uh, Adolfo has a very good groove, Victor Dominguez too. And then Carlos Bañales joined later. I didn't knew him, but I called him that I have a project. I sent him the, the music sheets, some audios. And he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm in. Mm -hmm. He's from Mexico City, so he came here to, to the recording, but he was excellent. When I listen to the music, I'm hearing that you've chosen to go a direction. I'm going to call it with external influence. And, and where I'm going to go with this is that Latin America is very rich with its own typical music. As you mentioned, the marimba, especially Mexico, is so big. It has many varieties of typical music like norteño trio music los panchos i mean there you had a lot of options but with the groove league it's kind of falling more in a groovy funky i don't like to say american music because there's a lot of groove players from other parts of the world as well why did you choose to go in that direction versus a more typical music direction as you said mexico has a lot of culture in that way. I like that music too, but it's weird, but I grew up with my mom records, mm -hmm. that it's mostly funk and disco. So I grew up listening to that kind of music. That's why I like it. And because in that kind of music, the bass have like a more preponderous role. So I decided to go that way because uh, yeah, I was making the rhythm section, but uh, I wanted to do something more in the bass. Yeah. And, I, and I like the groove, I love the groove and, and the funk music. So it needed to be that way because I, I could do some Mexican stuff, but it wouldn't be honesty because I, I love funk. Yeah. It's in me. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah. And since we're talking about the music itself, Tell us about your gear. How do you get your sound? Actually, I'm playing with a music man, Caprice Bass, mm -hmm. for string. I, I, I'm not into that discussion of Jack only needs four. No, <laughs> I, I use four string because it's easy for me. It's what I need. I used to play 
five strings sometime, but mm, it's not my thing. But I, I'm not making less that people use more strings. I, I don't care in that. In returning to the topic, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I'm also using Mac bass combo, and that's all. Some few payloads and that. It's only what I need. Do you have a special choice in strings? Yeah. I use Lister strings. They are the strings that I like the most because they last longer. I am, I'm not making a, a commercial, but they are that have the, the most durability. I have used other brands, I'm not saying which one, but mm -hmm. they only last me like one week. It's not reliable, no. so gotcha. I use Elixir. And what are your plans for the future? I know you guys just released your album. What's next? I'm thinking of making another album with the group League. But also making some EP with other kind of music. I think it, it will be like jazz, more more jazzy because with the group league it's more about the funk. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking making other album more inclined to, to the jazz music. But it will be with other name because I don't want people to be confused. And also I have a another funky band which we don't have a name yet, but it will be released soon. And other projects I have, like, <laughs> there. As a bass player, you have a lot of, of projects <laughs> because there are no many bass players there. <laughs> if people want to know about what you're doing or follow or maybe catch your guys' uh, show or something, the best place to look is on your Facebook or Instagram pages? Yeah, Facebook and Instagram. I'm using more Instagram now. But, but yeah, on Facebook, I, I post a lot of things too. Well, Javier, we appreciate you taking time to chat with us. Folks, uh, here you have from Mexico, Javier Regalado León, coming to you directly on Bass Musician Magazine. Thanks for basing out with us here on BassMusicianMagazine.com.